now we're going to get down to the nitty gritty of what Indians are all about. I still say we Indian people are believers in the truth. This is the way of life that was given to your people. You're born an Indian, you're going to die an Indian. Indianness is a good life. You're facing an Indian this afternoon. Good Saturday afternoon out there, everyone. Welcome to your number one source for Native American television news, Muskogee Vision. I am your host, Jason Salzman, and we are here in the Muskogee Media Studios, and we're excited to bring you the show once again here on the CW19. And all the folks out there that are out of the viewing area watching us on YouTube, we want to welcome you in for this episode as well. We've got some neat stuff for you today. Uh, really going to take a look at a reopening of one of the Creek Nation's uh, premier, I guess you could call it entertainment or recreation uh, places, and that is Fountainhead Creek Golf Course down in Eufaula. Uh, as a part of Fountainhead State Park down there, it's a big golf course that's been uh, played for years and years in the area. But uh, if you haven't been in a while, you may not recognize the place. They've done lots of renovations, and it was closed for uh, you know five or six months while they were getting all of this redone. Completely new championship level Bermuda Greens. So all of that coming up as they had a grand reopening this week. I was able to go down there and get that and, and we're gonna show it to you today. Got a little bit of uh, a special footage coming to you uh, from a gentleman uh, that did a video of the, on the history of Haskell and the athletics there. So not a lot of our viewers out there uh, have some uh, connection to Haskell, whether it be a family member that went there, you may have went there. So a lot of people want to see things uh, from Haskell Indian Nations University, and we've got that for you this week. So don't go anywhere. We're going to be right back after this first commercial break. You're watching Muskogee Vision. As part of our grand reopening, we're partnering with Muskogee Media. We're just getting ready to do another one of our $100 shopping spree giveaways and I wanted to give a big thank you to the Muskogee Media uh, for sponsoring this event. Like Randy's Foods and Muskogee Media on Facebook and share this video for the drawing. And welcome back to the program. And as we get started this week, as I told you this past Monday, I was down in Eufaula, my old stomping grounds, as they had a reopening ceremony and a ribbon cutting on the all new renovations that have been taking place at Fountainhead Creek Golf Course, the tribe's golf course down there at Fountainhead State Park. Big plans for that area as it is all now in trust. Uh, the tribe certainly has a lot of development in the works, uh, plans that they've talked about, uh, Principal Chief, has uh, said these things and so we're really excited about the area but also uh, just getting that golf course up, up to par uh, as I, if I can use a pun there uh, which was uh, new golf carts uh, all new greens uh, new pro shop uh, new roof, ceiling, everything. So it's really a different place. It's really enhanced the place as far as for the players. The new putting greens are phenomenal. So we went down there for this uh, ceremony to reopen Fountainhead Creek Golf Club. And here is that story now for you. The tribe's had the golf course for a few years now and we wanna make sure it's something that um, we take pride in. I am very pleased that we got the golf course to where it is today and we've got it open and um, everything's upgraded. This is probably the centerpiece of all the development and future plans in this area. Um, you know, we're working with the state for the state park and um, hopefully we'll get that done by the end of this year. Of course, the 64 acres we have in trust that we 
got a complete plans on. Um, but the golf course is a historic site and it's nice to go back in, make it new again, um, redo the clubhouse and invite the public back out and get them engaged. Um, everybody loves to play golf and so this is going to be one of the top courses in this area. We're very proud of it and um, I think we've got the staff really excited. There's new equipment out here and um, you know it's, it's now to where we're making a profit off of the golf course and so we want to continue to build on that and continue to get people out here and just have fun and know that uh, it employs tribal members. Um, they're very vested in this in this course and um, just keep it going. That's, it's, it looks great as you can see in the background and we want to keep it that way and even make it better. We want to be proud of this piece here because this is kind of the beginning of uh, what's going to happen in this fountainhead Eufaula area here and so once we get this solidified, um, make this course playable again, uh, we don't want certainly to not be an embarrassment to the tribe and I think now we have a course to be proud of and uh, hopefully we can grow memberships here and then as you know, potential you know, casino resorts we talked about or the overall park, you know, we can just work together and overall just have a, a huge attraction uh, down here in, in Eufaula. Hiring Jimmy uh, Signs was a, a, a key event for us this year. We found him uh, and he started in June and he has over 25 years of golf experience and before that, um, you know, my first six months here, I was trying to help manage the course and I have no experience in golf and so to just have someone here I can trust and know they're going to own the course and take care of it really helps me out in making sure that um, you know this course is going to be well taken care of, well managed. Um, the staff here has that one-on-one -on -one contact they need each day <clears throat> and really um, he has knowledge of both um, you know the ground side plus he's a, a teaching pro too so um, you, you can't really ask for more than that with, with uh, you know a manager here and uh, he's done great jobs as far as he knows what kind of structure we need as far as pricing goes um, he knows how to handle the growing of the greens in because you know we spent over hundred thousand dollars in the greens we got to make sure that we take care of those and don't have to go to the National Council and ask for money again because um, we want to make sure we're good stewards of the tribe's money um, but, you know, we've worked on the clubhouse completely, the grounds here completely, and just the staff has a new excitement that they haven't had in years because they have a course they can be proud of. This is unique just because of the setting, so I think that's what attracted me the most. And when I was talking to Kyle about it, what's around? The lake, redoing that. This has a lot of the feel that you could bring back to what the Lake of the Ozarks has there in Missouri. Uh, with what they have with their resort. I think there's, a, there's an opportunity for us to capitalize on. You have so many communities that really don't have a, a place to play unless they're willing to drive 40, 45 minutes to go play. So, you know, it's just an untapped, it's an untapped area, really. I think it's a forgotten entity around the community. I really do. I think it's a golf course and a business that was lost for the last 10 years, so I think it's an opportunity for us to kind of reestablish ourselves. The excitement for me and the excitement for the community, it's new again. It hadn't been new for a while. So now I think that it helps us in marketing it as well because everybody just forgot about it. So when it got forgot about, you open it back up and now it's new. So there's that excitement. So I think that's the biggest opportunity for us is to build off of that excitement. It's not, oh, it's the old, you know, the, the old fountainhead. It's something that got re revitalized. All right, I want to thank everybody down there for putting on a great event. Uh, the new GM, uh, Jimmy Sines, uh, great to meet him. Se seems like he's got things on the right track down there. And what he said was uh, they'd be starting a... Um, an instructional school down there in the spring too so that's going to be a big thing uh, that hasn't taken place at Fountainhead Creek Golf Club before uh, and I know Chief Floyd excited to be there and also Kyle Lee the uh, Director of Tourism and Recreation who manages the facility uh, for the Muskogee Creek Nation so it'll be interesting to see that place continue to develop and grow and uh, hopefully do great things for the Muskogee Creek Nation.
Well, as I said earlier in the uh, opener, uh, a lot of people out there have fond memories of Haskell Indian Nations University, their time at Haskell, the history of Haskell, people that they knew there, some of the people that really did some great things there uh, academically as well as athletically. Now, the reason I say that is because uh, there's been some news out of Haskell recently. They have a new executive director for the Haskell Foundation, and the Haskell Foundation basically uh, raises money for the school, tries to get people interested uh, in the school, what's going on at Haskell, everything like that. And the Haskell Foundation, a few years back, uh, with the help of the Muscogee Creek Nation National Council, produced or uh, set in motion uh, a film to be produced about the history of Haskell athletics. And we uh, were able, uh, fortunate enough, from a gentleman named Bill Curtis that actually put together this film, uh, and he edited it, put it together, everything like that. Uh, he sent it to us to be able to show on our program. And uh, you won't be able to see this anywhere else unless you have the copy from Bill himself or the Haskell Foundation but uh, here now for the first time on Muskogee Vision is the history of ha uh, the golden era the history of Haskell athletics and we hope you enjoy it here on the program. The historic Haskell Arch in Lawrence, Kansas is a magnificent reminder of the rich sports and athletic achievements of American Indians. Haskell athletes won international accolades as a powerhouse in collegiate football in the 1920s and 30s. John Levi, an Arapaho from Bridgeport, Oklahoma, was named first team All-American in 1923. Jim Thorpe said that Levi was the greatest athlete he had ever seen. After graduation from Haskell, John Levi served as both an assistant and head football coach at Haskell. He later was invited to try out for the New York Yankees. Another All-American football player was Lewis Rabbit Weller. He was a Caddo from Northern Oklahoma. In his career at Haskell, he scored 13 touchdown runs of over 60 yards. In Haskell's win over the undefeated Oklahoma A&M, Rabbit Weller returned a kickoff for 90-yard touchdown and then later returned a punt for a 95-yard touchdown to beat Oklahoma A&M 13-12. He later played professionally for the Boston Redskins and the Tulsa Oilers. Mays McLean, a Cherokee from Pryor, Oklahoma, was an All-American in football and led the nation in scoring in 1926. He scored an astonishing 253 points by running a record 38 touchdowns during the 1926 season a record that stood for 62 years. He scored a record 55 points in one game, running for eight touchdowns and seven extra points in a game against Wichita University. The Wichita Eagle wrote, McLean put up the most astonishing exhibition of football ever seen in Wichita. 19-year-old Amasoli Patasani competed in the 10,000 meter at the 1920 Olympics. In an interview after the race, he was asked what he wanted to do, and he said he wanted to get back to Haskell and complete eighth grade. One of the great athletes of Haskell's history was Buster Charles, who came in fourth at the 1932 Olympics in the decathlon. By the end of World War II, Haskell's education role had evolved from a normal and trade school for American Indians into a secondary high school program with added post-secondary vocational programs. Transition came at a particularly difficult time in Indian history. In the early 1950s, the Congress was pushing to terminate all of the tribes, and to cut off their trust benefits. 
To accomplish this, they established a policy that required Indian children to attend local public schools. The only exception was made for orphans and children in extreme poverty. They were permitted to attend boarding schools like Haskell. In spite of the adverse situation these students came from, the 1950s and 60s became a time of great achievement in Haskell athletics and once again established Haskell as a center for Indian athletic excellence, now on the high school level. But uh, the big story is in 1955, Haskell was 10 and 0, and uh, they were ranked first in the state, and Ed Postoak and John Edwards were the Kansas Kobacks of the year, and both of them rushed for over a thousand yards and both of them went on to college. I mean, and to that, that was, you know, part of the kind of the highlight of saying, I, I labeled from 1949, or really maybe from 53 after Haskell grew up, to 1961, to my senior year, was really the, the golden era for Haskell athletics. During the 1950s and 60s, no one had a more positive influence on Haskell athletics than coach and athletic director Tony Coffin. Tony was a Potawatomi from Mayetta, Kansas, and he came to Haskell in the late 1930s as an assistant coach. He, uh, he had patience and he had understanding. And he had common, he was common with us. Being a special guy from uh, Mayetta, Kansas, I guess that, that little piece of land up there made him special. Because when he talked to us, it had meaning. We knew it, we all knew it. He was a, he was a very polite individual, very understanding. And he never shouted at us. Now I used to be amazed at that because most coaches will shout at you. But Tony Coffey never shouted at us, and I called a man a saint. And so he put his arm around me and said, uh, Jim, he said, I know where you come from. You're an orphan. You don't have anybody to look up to or any support, family support. So he said, I want to be part of your family. And I let him be part of my family. With his arm around my shoulder, he said, I live just down the street down here. Uh, you're welcome to my home, you're welcome to my icebox, you're welcome to be my family, and you're welcome to go to church with us. And so that was a start. And at that, at that time, he became a father to me. But Tony and his wife uh, were like that. And before his, his boys were born, I was the son. And John and Ed and all the rest of the guys became family to him. But I was in his house more than probably his kids were after they was born. And uh, I couldn't ask for a very better person to be a guidance or a father to now, me. Me, for myself, I feel that they took a little guy that was angry at the world and uh, made me worth something. Made me worth being somebody, you know. Tony had a special gift for working with young Indian athletes. He was able to instill a strong work ethic in his players, and he inspired them to accomplish greater things than they thought they were capable of. All of these without the use of harsh discipline. He'd tell you how to do it, but he wouldn't tell you to do it. It came from in here, you know, he wanted it to come from you. And he just had a way with, with all of us um, I don't, and I don't care who it is, I'm sure they would tell you basically the same thing. He was really, a, I mean, he knew the X's and O's, or he knew the, you know, game plan, he knew those kind of things, but more than that, he, he uh, helped you become a complete person, 
and that, that's what I really, you know, as I've grown older, uh, and that's what I tried to do in my coaching years here at Haskell was. I remember as a freshman, sitting down and Tony Coffin, Coach Coffin is talking to all of the athletes. And he's talking about, in this audience, some of you can become great. Then he looked past the big football players who I think had just come off of an undefeated season. And there was a young freshman, the smallest freshman next to, how was the second smallest? And he looked at both of us, Carl Pierce, and said, one of you, for example, I'm not just talking about these you big, great athletes, you young football players, uh, one of you two, the two littlest ones here, one of you might just be the person that goes on and achieves something great in sport. So Tony had that unique ability to, to inspire you within. I had a chance to come back after I graduated from college to work under him closely every day for five years. And so it was really valuable for me because as a beginning coach, I, uh, every day it was like a coaching clinic. Tony was convinced that sports involvement at both a team and individual level gave Haskell students the greatest opportunities to develop self-confidence, pride, and character. These opportunities were few and far between in their home communities at that time. Coach Coffin's policy was to encourage all students that were physically able to participate in athletics, whether they were athletically gifted or not and his ability to motivate students can be found in the Haskell records of 1953 when there were 173 boys enrolled at Haskell and 110 of those boys received athletic awards for interschool athletics. He helped me tremendously. You know, in sports, uh, he put me on detail in the gym and I shot hook shots for 45 minutes before we ever practiced, and I got where I couldn't be. <laughs> During the track season, he once sent four teams to four track meets on the same day with different boys on each team. Haskell was the undefeated state champion that year. Coach Coffin and his staff encouraged students to stay in school. Like I said, I was there for two weeks, and I was about ready to run off and come back home, and that's when I... I was coming home, I was going to hitchhike home that time, and I went out, I was walking toward the uh, north end of the uh, campus there, and old Pete Shepard called me and called me in there and told me and everything, and he convinced me to stay. He said, you stay till Christmas, and if you don't like it, you can stay home. And when I come back home on Christmas, I was ready to go right on back then, because I missed Asco. He, he was a good guy, man, yeah. He was, I learned a lot from him in, in sports, you know, and same way with Tony Coffin, I, you know, that guy was, he was a good idol guy, you know, he, he was, he knew what he was talking about, you know. From 1952 through 1962, Haskell dominated the Jayhawk Conference by winning 10 consecutive conference championships in track and field and cross country. And there were just so many good things happened. I mean, you know, you looked at that and we just dominated. Especially, we were state champions in 59. And I, it just goes through, the Haskell, we just dominated track and field and cross country. The Haskell football programs won two outright conference titles, one in 1953 and the other in 1959, with the 1955 team tying for the league title. While the 1951 football season had a disappointing record of two wins and seven losses, the 1952 season was a totally different story. Haskell had their best record since 1946 by winning eight games and losing only one that season. This was before entering the Jayhawk League and most of their opponents were much larger Kansas high schools. By far their strongest competitor that season was their final game against Emporia, Kansas. During that game, Ed Postok rushed for an astonishing 196 yards. Tom Jimboy played as a running back in that game. And uh, I thought there for a minute there that we just might lose that game because it was closing seconds we scored that touchdown. and. Uh, 
never run that play before. Mm. And uh, Tony called it, and I, I just thought, oh, no, this is not going to work. And uh, John took took the ball and uh, went around the right end. And Reginald House, I think that's probably the first time he ever caught a pass. Mm. And it just so happened he was wide open down on the end zone, mm. and we caught that. And uh, John threw it mm. and uh, made some kids cry <laughs> there at Emporia. James Ryle, Lloyd Elm, and Ed Postoak were honored that year by being named All-Conference. Ed Postoak was selected for the All-State team. James Ryle and Lloyd Elm were named All-State Honorable Mention. The undefeated 1953 Haskell football team has been referred to as one of the finest high school football teams in not just Haskell history, but one of the best in the state of Kansas prior to and during that time period. Statistically, the 1953 team was a juggernaut. I do. He was a good quarterback. He wasn't a tall person, but he was a good quarterback. They, their 1954 high school team went undefeated. 10 and 0 or 11 and 0, whatever it was. Yeah. He was, he was a good ball handler. Deceptive. And then with Johnny Edwards there, he could go from sideline to sideline before he'd finally end up going, going downfield for a touchdown. He would almost tire people out from sideline to sideline. Yeah. And they averaged that year, their undefeated team, they averaged a first down every other play. So, I mean, you know, he could go five yards, Ed could go five yards, or he could go 10 yards and no yards, but they averaged 10, you know, first down every other play that year. Uh, John Edwards, he was, he was a great runner. He would get the ball and he would start from maybe 10 yards down here and, and then just zigzag, just like this, just escaping from all the, you know, the, the opponents, you know, and, and next thing you know, she, he's scoring. Yeah. It, was, it was beautiful to see him run like that. I'd read it, but I remember the play. He got the ball, they stopped him, and he ran back around this side of the field, and then he wound up going to that side of the field, like on the 30-yard line, and then coming on in. Mm -hmm. So to, to make that touchdown, I don't know how many yards. I think it was growing over the years. Yeah. But I remember the play. Yeah. And he was so quick. Yeah. He was so quick and for a person that had the speed he had, he had a quickness to go along with it. Ed touched the ball like six times. Three times he scored a touchdown. One of them like an 80 yard run right up the middle through everybody. He scored three touchdowns. Hey, we hope you enjoyed Muskogee Vision. Everybody out there, remember to go and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Hit the red button. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, uh, Snapchat. We're all over the place. So everyone have a great week. We'll see you next time. You've been watching Muskogee Vision.